Find out today why I'm returning the Lightspeed Zulu Delta headset, what I don't like about it, and what headset I'm gonna be changing over to. Let's pop this open and see what we've got. Right, we've got some paperwork. We will whack that over here. Uh, stuff to get onto the Instagram. I mean, look, there's puppies and there's romantic couples. So I guess that's kind of what they're trying to appeal to. And telling you to download the Lightspeed app for iPhone. Well, that's useless. There's like 50% of the smartphone market gone. This is the biggest thing that I've not seen on any review, any video review, any written review that I've read and I have spent quite a while looking up which headset should I be getting. Nothing said that you would not be able to get full capacity out of this headset if you used anything other than Apple. If you're a pilot and you want to get the most out of this headset and you use Android, buy something else. Now. We'll actually have a look at it. So it comes in a really nice hard case. It should have a little Apple logo on there. They're not as heavy. Oh, what do we got here? Okay. That's even more disappointing. Straight from the box. You know, the 30 day money back guarantee? I'm thinking we might be having to take them up on that. Because, all right, I'm going to have to push that in there. Right in there. Right, so that feels like memory foam. The ear cups. You got some uncolored foam in there, which sort of speaks to build quality. The cushioning is alright. You've got a very basic speaker in there. Um, the stretch is okay. It's got this nice metal feel to it. It feels a little bit like uh, a gaming headset. Now they've got a carbon monoxide sensor in here. And we've got a decent boom, and it's got an OK windsock, a UAC to USB A plug, which is going to be awkward to replace if that breaks. Right, so the other thing that it's got is this replaceable, hot swappable battery pack. Now, this is actually the main reason why I bought this is that you've got this unit which you can just put normal AA batteries into or you've got this one here which is a lithium rechargeable battery now it's got your different dip switches on the underside here which is nice because if I don't have a iPhone I guess this is where you do all of the modifications to your headset a letdown is that this isn't chargeable via anything like a USB-C, which, you know, everyone these days is kind of using. Right, so before we uh, get into any further review of this, we're gonna have to charge this up. I finally booted up my old Apple phone and I've got the app installed. I had to remember what my password was and then I had to go through and create a password for this app on its own. So now we've got it and it's telling me to turn on my headset. And these buttons are really quite small. Okay, and so then it's got telling us about the safety sensors. From sensor to recording, recording during flight, and personalized sound for hearing loss and then it's got a multi-function button and what you're going to do for it so 
Uh, check loader for the CO2 sensor. Let's set up this noise profile. So let's try this headset out on and see how difficult this process is. So in the background, in here, I've got a server running, so that's got a bit of noise. But there's nowhere near the amount of noise that a plane is. And I can hear it still. And I've got a loud hissing. Well, I'm glad to know that the uh, carbon monoxide in my room is not high. Okay. Well, that looks like that's our setup. I guess let's check it out in the plane and then Dad and I will be able to compare our headsets. Set to go. Beautiful, you got no climb and descent, so know where your windscreen is. Okay, I can tell you. So again. Oh, these head this headset? Yeah. I don't think you'll like it. That's good. Okay, round we go. We're going out to Desert. Desert. Yeah, so with this headset, okay, it's very clear. Yeah. But in that climb and everything, I'm hearing like a dook, 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 like you know how it's cutting out on a frequency? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not nice. Yeah, they, um, I'm not sure if it'll be a setting or something that I need to change. But, you know, you put the music on and it, um, it'll quiet down as we go. It'll, it's better than the David Clarks. Yep. But any intercom noise, it just drops the volume of the music in the background. But it's that... It is cutting a fair bit out. You can definitely still hear the engine noise. Do you want to try these just to see the difference? We should have enough to be able to pass that over to you. For me, there. Oh, wait till you hear me talking. Yeah, so it makes a lot louder. You can hear me very clearly. Yeah, yeah. So the the voice. It'll be good to hear how the comms come through from uh, Melbourne or yeah, over top. But yeah, that's that one's a lot clearer. This one's got a bit of a distortion in it. Yeah, and they're lighter. Yeah, and there's not as much pressure in on them. Yeah. Which would be interesting, you know, we both fly with glasses, and all pilots really fly with glasses. Where you've either got sunnies on or you've got, you know, you've got something on. Yeah. So you can probably control the volume on there. Yeah, so you've got the volume to your music on these really small buttons. Yeah. And then you've got your yeah. right left balance. Yeah, 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 okay, give us that. Yeah, so you can bring this down. Yeah. Oh, that, that, you bring them down. So what, that's left and right ballots? Yeah. Yeah. So what you could do is you can have your music coming through your left ear and all your comps coming through your right ear. <laughs> okay, with them both set there, you try that, you switch it back and try that on now yourself. Okay. Yeah. Your forwards. That's only controlling our... Uh, Does that make it nicer for you when I talk? Yeah, it is. But I wonder if that's altering our noise cancelling level. Or if you can alter that. But yours, like your audio from your microphone is a bit distorted. Oh, I'll tell you what, that popping 
Coffee? Pop, 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 pop. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the advantages are, yeah, audio, like, talking to each other, very clear and crisp, but that popping noise, I guess, like, we've got the advantage that we can always try this headset out in a different aircraft. We just jump in the Savannah. Yes, yes. And see what the difference is. Yep. So here we are today doing a service on the Savannah and we've just been for a couple of circuits in the Ventura and Dad and I have been testing out the headsets for the last week and a half since we got the new Lightspeed Delta Zulu. To be frank, it's been a little bit disappointing but there's a number of reasons why and one of the best things about the concerns we've had with the headset is that we aren't alone in it. And when I contacted the retailer, so flightstore.com.au, they've been extremely helpful in sorting out the returns process, but also discussing the solutions to the problem. What we are comparing in the video is the Lightspeed Delta Zulu, which is their latest offering. The the Bose A20s, which we've had for a few years now, they've got six years on them. And we've got the David Clark 1X, and these are a few years old, but they haven't actually had a lot of use. So, first up, we're going to kind of look at the major differences we have in the aircraft, uh, in the headsets, and, well, the similarities. All three of these headsets, have active noise reduction, which means you've got noise cancelling. I'm not sure if the light speed has got digital, but I know that the Bose has analog and so does the David Clark. All three have Bluetooth connectivity. All three have Bluetooth connectivity, which means you can link your phone to them. The light speed is the only one with a dedicated app, but that is only usable on an iPhone. You can't set the headset up. You can't even use the headset really without using an iPhone to set it up and configure it, which is a problem because I use Android. There's an issue with that, and that's not great. It's got a carbon monoxide sensor in it, which is handy, um, but I think for all the reasons that you have that, you could have a separate one in the plane. Too often what we end up with is Swiss Army knives. There's too much in them and not doing the job uh, completely that they could. You can be better with a split of the tools rather than having a combination. Put a proper little meter in. Don't try and have it doing everything. This has got a removable power pack. This is rechargeable only when you've got the headset. You can't actually recharge this outside the plane independently. So you have to take the headset and this, plug the headset into the wall to charge it. Yes, it's USB which is good for our planes because we've got USB panel power. But for anyone who doesn't have it and you want to take it around, it is a small issue. It wouldn't be that hard to add a USB port on this to charge it, which would make it really versatile. I'm all about rechargeables. On our Bose A20s, they've retained, well, they've still got a AA, two AA batteries and we run rechargeable batteries in those. And you can get a six pin if your plane is compatible with it to take power off your aircraft for it, but you have to have an intercom that's got active noise reduction. The David Clarks, they run off double A's as well. And really in terms of noise reduction out of the headsets, I found that the David Clarks aren't brilliant they're not very loud for anything like if you're trying to listen to audiobooks or music. The Bose are incredibly good quality. You would expect that from the, the company that produces them. You can listen to audiobooks, you can listen to music, and it's really nice. The Lightspeed, great headset on the ground. Really high fidelity, it's good music, good quality for listening to news or podcasts. However, you lose all of that when you're flying. Looking at these other headsets, a point to compare is how they deal with traffic control or intercom 
because when you're listening to music, you need to be able to hear your traffic control and everyone else, and also what's going on in your cab. Now, the Bose, I think, are the best in the field for this because they've got a three position switch, and this is for your music and your Bluetooth, which is got mute, mix, and off. Now, what that means is that when you get traffic control or traffic through your headset, it will mute the music, it will turn your Bluetooth off, like your Bluetooth music off, or it will mix it. And what that does is it dampens the audio from your phone and allows your, you to hear traffic control. Now, the light speed and the David Clark's mute and mix, it's really stilted and quite noticeable. There's no transition between it and it's frustrating, particularly when you're on a phone call because that's one of the things we've noticed a lot is when you're on a phone call, what sort of effect you have from incoming other traffic. Usually when we're on the phone, we'll just flick pilot isolate on so you don't have to hear the other person's phone call. But it's probably the most seamless method is the Bose. Looking at why I'm getting rid of the light speed is because of quality issues. Now it's a warranty problem that it's got and there's this horrible crackling sound that you get. Initially, we thought it was to do with the aircraft. We tried out in two different aircraft to see if it was just background noise from that. But the way that I describe the audio problems from experience with this headset, the noise that you get is this wicked crackling, like crackling and popping that's quite nasty. And I would say that the pain threshold that you get, it's like someone is in a workshop with you and they've got a hammer and a steel workbench and they crack that on the bench next to you. You get that high pressure in your ear and that little bit of pain on your ears and it's not good. We noticed it a lot yesterday and we didn't have it on video when we did a, a descent in the little plane and we dropped 500 feet you know, in a normal pattern, but it was on that descent that I started to get this cracking and popping and different pressure sound or feeling from the light speed headset, which threw me out of whack. Now that's just dangerous and not ideal. We looked into what the problems with the light speed could be and the guys at Flight Store are discussing a lot with light speed what the problem is because I've used the uh, the Zulu 3 headset, and I found that amazingly good. Why I got this headset was because of this rechargeable USB and that you can plug it into your panel to get the power, which I really wanted to like. The Zulu 3s are basic. They're just like these Bows and the David Clarks. You just swap out the batteries when you need to and charge them somewhere else. This idea, though, of having this unit swappable out for your rechargeable power. I think it's something that both Bose and David Clark could learn from because that would be good. I think they could also improve it by making sure that the USB connection is something standard like a USB type C because that means you wouldn't have to buy a specific cord that's only now available for third party or you know after aftermarket accessories. So we've had those issues with the light speed, the audio quality is a bit louder. When we're talking to each other, you do hear a little bit of a difference between the Bose and the David Clarks. But you need to remember we're dealing with a brand new headset and a headset that is six years old and it's had a lot of use. So it's got a bit of age about it, but it is performing better than the new headset. Another thing we noticed with the light speed was any time you touch the headset, you would get that popping and cracking sound. You know, you adjust it, you'd get the pop and crack in your ears and it just was painful. We decided we'd try something out and you can notice the hat line here 
is down a bit and so we thought that that would have an effect on the fit. And it's something I noticed that not many people reviewing these headsets did was wear a hat. And in the demo videos, they do have people wearing a hat. But you can see that my hat's down here and that's not good on the ear seal. So we changed the hats out from the one that I find comfortable and I wear all the time. And I'm wearing a, a plat attack hat, which fits a little bit higher. And as you can see, there's a better ear seal because the hat's line sits above. So good, good flying hats. They're just not super comfortable. They're not my favorite, but they serve a purpose. So that's one thing that you can do to improve your ear seal with any of these headsets. But then you have the added part of wearing glasses. So these break up the ear seal a little bit. The cushion's pretty good about it. And I've still got reasonable quality in the blocking. My safety glasses just do not do that. Now my non-tinted glasses are flat and you notice no difference in it at all. So those are a couple of things you can do to improve the quality. Now, for me, comfort is paramount, but a big part of comfort is actually having them function as they're supposed to. So while they are comfortable, they've got nice big ear cups, which means they fit right around your ear. So you've got not a lot of pressure on there. They just do not work. Now the David Clarks and the Bose headsets have no issues with this type of hat at all or my different glasses. So there's something different there about the cushion design, which could be noted. That's kind of it. The tech support at Flight Store have been really good. Phoned them up on Friday and they said, yep, cool, not a problem. We'll sort it out for you, sent a label, ready to return it, and they're going to square me up with that. And they've asked if I wanted another pair of the, the Delta Zulus or what I'd like to do. And I've indicated that I would actually like to go to the Bose A30s. Now there's $51 difference between those, but I am a fan of the Bose and the quality has been great. I'm not really willing to take the risk again on Lightspeed to get another headset, to return it, to come forwards and backwards, because it is a warranty issue. However, I'd like a reliable headset and I like some of the features that the Bose has and some of the upgrades that they've made to the new model. A big thing and a huge problem and let down on this headset is that you can't use them with Android to change any of your settings. Now it is a, your, your headset's personal, it's for you only. And so not having it available on Android means that to do any software or firmware updates on the headset, which it could be, all that they need is a firmware update to fix the popping and cracking and other issues that they've got. Anyone who's got an Android doesn't have access to that support. So that's a massive letdown. Now the bows, I do like the volume control on here so we can have our individual settings and you've got your Bluetooth options, which are great. And in the new model, which I obviously will review when we get it, uh, they've got different levels of noise cancellation. So we go to the David Clark and it does not have a lot of features. On this controller, you've only got power on, Bluetooth on and your left right controls. You don't have any of that music control. You don't have any volume control on the side of it, which you do have on your Bose, volume for your music in, volume for your intercom. And you do have it on the light speed, which is left and right volume, carbon monoxide button, play pause for your music and volume up and down for your music and your comms record. Now the comms record really isn't a feature that we need and also it's not available if you've got an Android, it will only work if you've got an Apple. Well that wraps up the headsets and what ones we want to be, what ones I'm going to be changing over to and what features I'd like to see in the future on these headsets, particularly for our environment where we're running small piston engines. Thanks for tuning in and 
I hope that this is somewhat useful to you and in your decision making. Lightspeed have got a long way to go. David Clark are a classic in the aviation world, but Bose are where it's at for audio quality. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Good. Yeah. Ah, uh, this is going to be annoying. But yes, it's. Get, I'm getting that constant thumping, thumping, thumping. So you won't take this set. No, no, I'm fine. I can. So it doesn't give you the shits. No. Yeah, it's just nothing. Like it's better with them. Yeah. Yeah. Better with them off. 